Hello everybody. So today is the day I'm going to give you a tour of my 1996 Explorer 230. Also known to my followers as the African Queen. I have put a tremendous amount of work and time and money into this old gal uh, over the last five years or so. I pulled her out of a field in Maryland. She'd sat there for a long time and uh, had her trailered up to, to Michigan where I began the process. So we'll start up front here. Uh, first thing I did was put in a new engine. Uh, the old engine apparently had been overheated to the point where the valves had basically glassed over. The carbon in the, on the valves had turned to glass and the engine was trashed. So put in a brand new engine at 56,000 miles and it now has something like 80,000, give or take. I'll double check when we get inside. So, new engine, and along with that, new fuel pump, cleaned out the entire fuel system, uh, new plugs and wires, new injectors, new radiator, new alternator. Two years ago, actually, I put a new alternator in. Um, let's see, what else? Can't think of anything off the top of my head right now, but most things under the hood are new. Um, we put new brakes on in the front, new brake... Uh, uh, calipers and pads in the front. Uh, rears still have the original brakes and they are just fine. Plenty of pad left still on them. Well, I don't know if they're original brakes, but they're the brakes that they had that were on there when I got the thing. So, um, let's give you a little walk around tour here. You can see I, I named her the African Queen because when I got it, it was just, it looked horrible and it was run down and ragged, didn't even run. And everybody thought I was crazy. Nobody saw the value in it but me. So I felt like Humphrey Bogart in the African Queen, so that's uh, where the name came from. Anywho, uh, I put on a new grill when I got it because the old one was cracked and nasty. I put on new headlights a couple years ago. These have nice, uh, nice pretty new headlights here. The paint is probably the worst part of the thing. Um, everything is solid. The body is real solid. There's no rust except for one tiny little spot that I'll show you, show you later, but basically 99% of this thing is solid as a rock. No serious problems whatsoever. Um, the paint is pretty burned from sitting out in that field for so long. There's no clear coat left. Um, you can see the that there, you know, some on the corners, some of the paint is coming off and that sort of thing. Over here, you see I put this adhesive on here. This is actually, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but it's really, really sticky, strong stuff that's meant to go on an awning to seal up holes in an awning, but I put it along these areas here, down here, along here, because basically the paint was just flaking off and it was just bare metal. And I didn't want that to start rusting or to flake off even further, so I put this on. And this stuff does come off fairly easily. You just sort of peel it off with your finger and then you use some goo gone to get whatever residual stuff is left on there. So if you decide you want to repaint this thing, that, paint, that stuff will come off pretty easily. So it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, but I call this a 20 foot paint job because you stand back, you know, 10, 20 feet and it looks pretty good. You can't really see anything, anything wrong with it. It's really only when you get up close that you start to see the issues. And for the record, the top and everything, I, I didn't have a chance to clean it. Uh, I've been really, really busy, but I wanted to get this video recorded. So it's kind of dirty. So forgive me for that. Um, but anyway, Everything is solid. It just doesn't look all that pretty up close. Uh, the wheels had the original hubcaps on there. I really didn't like them. So I painted the rims and polished up the beauty rings and put on some uh, chrome lug nuts to give it a nice sort of rugged look. And I think it looks really good. Uh, on the side here, we'll walk along. You see you got these tilt out awning windows, one on each, one in the middle, one in the back. And then you got one on the other side. Uh, these are nice because you can have them open in the pouring rain and the rain stays out. Uh, you can see the rubber here has shrunk. I have new rubber that just will pop right in to replace this and that will be included in the sale. I just never got around to installing it. Um, but fortunately this does not prevent leaks. This stuff is just decorative. The glass is actually glued in and keeps the water out so it wasn't really a priority. Um, but I'll give that to whoever buys this thing and uh, you'll be free to put that in yourself. It's really easy to do. Um, again, on this side, more of that tape. You see it's running up and down. Doesn't look all that great, but it keeps the, th the rust and everything from 
taking hold and keep protects the metal. Uh, running boards, got some fiberglass cracking and things like that going. You see the spider cracks. That's just sort of a fact of life with these old vans. These these fiberglass running boards just didn't hold up. The the when once this cracking starts, there's nothing nothing you can do about it. Uh, water heater. I put a new water heater in less than two years ago. So brand new, basically, and it's got the self-igniter, so you flip a switch inside and it lights itself. So that's very nice. It's also got this little uh, electric kit. Uh, this probe here slides into this, uh, uh, the plug here, this is the drain plug, it just slides in. And then there's a switch on the inside, you turn that on when you're plugged into the campground, and you heat your water with electricity instead of propane. So it saves you money not having to burn propane every time you want to take a shower and you have hot water all the time when you're plugged in. So I really like that. So that's uh, a feature that'll go along with the sale. Uh, the furnace does work. I didn't, it didn't work for the first few years and I found out that there's actually a on off switch inside here for some reason and somebody had turned it off. So for three years I thought the furnace was broken. It turned out just to be a matter of flipping that switch and the furnace works great. So anyway, that was my annoyance. Uh, down here you're dump valves gray and black I will talk more about this when I get inside uh, these are new I replaced these because uh, I had to completely redesign the black uh, sewage system and I will again talk about more than that when I get inside this plug here is for air uh, the rear has air springs that I installed one on each side and you've just put uh, the same thing that you use for inflating a tire right to this thing and you inflate it to about 55 to 60 psi is what I've found to be a good pressure to really give the rear end some support because you got a lot of weight in the back you got your fuel tank you got your fresh water tank you got your black tank you got your generator all that stuff is in the back so you really got to give the rear end some support uh, so before you take a trip you air those things up and you're good to go it really made a difference to uh, keeping the thing stable going down the road and actually that reminds me of something I need to show you up front. Let's see if I can do this without getting soaked because the ground's all wet. Uh, let's see if I tilt this up. Can you see it? Yes, that blue thing right there. That is a steering stabilizer that I installed. The, these old Dodges had a problem with the steering box where the shaft coming out and going to the uh, pitman arm had side to side play in it. Even brand new they'd have the play in it. They weren't well made. So a guy here in Michigan actually designs these stabilizers for vans of this era and I bolted that on. It holds it steady and helps the thing drive nice and straight down the road. Makes a real difference. So that was definitely worthwhile. Oh, okay, let's see here. Coming back around here to the valves again. This is the little rust spot that I talked about. See, you got just a little bit of rust forming here. It's still solid though. It's not, it hasn't penetrated deep. But this has been here for the entire five years that I've owned this thing, and it has not gotten any worse because I don't drive this thing in the winter, ever. As soon as the weather turns cold, I put her in the garage, and she stays there until spring. So uh, I would recommend the same. Don't drive it in the winter, and this rust will not get any worse. But uh, if you decide to repaint, it won't take uh, a whole lot of uh, skill. A moderate, moderate body uh, guy could easily fix this rust before you repaint it. Uh, let's see here. We got your uh, 30 volt power plug. It has a uh, screw in connector that uh, obviously will come with the vehicle it just plugs right in and then it has a little sleeve that screws in nice and tight uh, Fuel Valve there. This is your city water connection. This is not for filling your tank This is for if you're at a campground you hook a hose up to this and you use the city uh, water rather than the water from your water tank This is your generator here it is an Onan uh, Micro Quiet 2800. This also was not working when I got the thing. It cost me $1,000 to get this thing fixed. But it is working, runs great, provides plenty of power to run the air conditioning, and uh, I've been very happy with it. And it's really not, not loud. It's called a Micro Quiet for a reason. Uh, coming back around here, I did replace this bumper as well. It had an original chrome bumper that uh, was all bent up and looked terrible. Uh, this is actually not an RV bumper. This is a, a four by four inch steel tubing. It's much thicker than an RV bumper and it's super, super strong. And I added these brackets for support. There's one on each side. Um, 
unfortunately because it's thicker than your standard RV bumper you can't fit a sewer hose in here so I put the sewer hose holder down here and that's it right there uh, there is no sewer hose right now because I had to steal this one to put in my new RV uh, this is your spare tire you see I got those ratchet straps on there I originally had the spare tire on this carrier right here but I found that it was actually too much weight hanging off the back so I put it back underneath and unfortunately while I was cranking it up the mechanism that holds it up broke about three inches from the top so I put those straps on there to hold it steady and they've been on there a couple of years now and they haven't moved or come loose or anything so I'm pretty happy with that setup it works no problem if you ever need the spare it won't, won't be that hard to get down uh, this little storage box I added I built this little frame for it this this box was actually made for the tongue of a trailer that's why it's shaped like this uh, and it works really well because you, you just flip this little thing up you un unlock it flip it up you put whatever you need in there and because it's angled it doesn't add to your uh, your swing you know you got some side to side swing when you're turning and this angle helps to prevent that from getting worse uh, air conditioner less than two years old as well I replaced the original air conditioner a couple years ago because it quit working and while I was up there I resealed that whole thing you'll see the air conditioner is kind of set in this saddle so they cut a hole in the roof and they built this th thing for the air conditioner to set in and I think there was some leakage in the past from that thing I'll show you some a little bit of water damage on the inside but I've resealed all that so that's not leaking anymore uh, coming around here you got a storage compartment in here I don't have my key on me so I will open this up later uh, this is your fill to fill your water he, uh, water tank right here so the uh, just put a hose in here and it uh, fills up your water tank it's a good size tank I find I can go about oh about a week give or take if I shower and use the toilet regularly I can go about a week obviously if you're more careful you can go longer uh, awning I had this awning installed as well uh, this is a carefree it's very nice you put a little crank thing that's in the storage bin on the, that little thing right there and you spin it and it just comes right out and it's got little legs that slide out and lock into these little uh, latches right here and there's one there and there's one in the, on the front and uh, I'll be happy to demonstrate that to a potential buyer uh, you got your side porch light that works just fine you got two power outlets here also work just fine this is the exterior shower which I also had installed this was not original I put that in I find it very useful for uh, cleaning up things like sandy shoes or pets for example I wash my dog with it all the time uh, anything that needs to go inside that might be dirty you can clean it up right here before you put it in which makes it real nice refrigerator I will talk about that in a few minutes um, you see these little brackets here and here I don't know how well if you can see through the slats, but there's a couple of auxiliary vent fans that I installed. And the control box is right here. You either set it to manual and it uses the temperature sensor on there to determine when to turn on and, and to what speed, or you just turn on manual and you can adjust the speed of the fans here. These are really not necessary until the temperature gets above like 90. Uh, but basically there's a the fridge itself has a little fan built in about here to blow the air upward because the vents, the, the heat sink is up here. So the fans, the fridge's built-in fan blows the air up and these auxiliary fans pull it and blow it outward, which is really helpful when the temperature gets really high uh, to help the fridge keep working properly. Uh, let's see, we're back around to the front here. Not a lot to see up front. Everything's pretty much standard. Uh, you got your... Uh, door pocket here. You got a little screen on the side window, which is nice. You sort of unzip this and then you can open the window and then you re-zip this back up. So that helps to keep the bugs out uh, and you can still have ventilation, which is good. So we'll go ahead and close that. Oh, another thing I forgot to say, I replaced the exhaust system when I redid the engine. So it's got a new exhaust system, except for the catalytic converter. Catalytic converter is original, but it still works just fine. Uh, battery is under this step you just remove this these two screws this thing comes off and then this thing slides out you put a new battery in um, it does need a new battery uh, the one that's on here works but only holds charge for maybe six or seven hours before it starts to go bad so uh, I would replace it it's about five years old um, it originally had nasty blue carpet 
that was really stained and smelly and just overall horrible. So I pulled that out and I replaced it with this one piece vinyl, fake wood. Looks really nice, but it's completely waterproof. You could walk in here with muddy shoes or whatever and all you gotta do is wipe it up and you're, you're good to go. Uh, and same thing in the front, I had this heavy duty vinyl installed by a upholstery company and it's uh, also waterproof and really, really strong. Um, you'd be hard pressed to, to damage that stuff in any way. Uh, this is a little thing that I built for my dog to sit on. You see his little bed up here. I will remove this. I have the original passenger seat that I will put back in. So you'll have the passenger seat. Uh, this is a couch, the couch model. Some of them have the dinette right here. This one has the couch and it's the jackknife couch. So you just reach under here. There's a strap here, yep, right here. And then you just sort of lift and pull and it drops down into a bed real easy. So you have extra sleeping area here. I never used it as a bed because I'm only one person, but it's really not an uncomfortable couch. It's actually quite comfortable. So uh, sit on there and, and relax most of the evening. Um, up front, everything's pretty much stock. I had a newer radio put in because the old one quit working. So I had an aftermarket radio put in. There's no CD player. It's just a stereo, but it's got the USB port and the auxiliary port there. So you can plug in your phone. It's also got a spot for an SD card right here. So it works pretty well. Uh, let's see. Uh, the TV will not be going with the unit. However, the bracket will. This is something I installed and I'll push this off to the side here. So you just push it off to the side, then you can open up these cabinets. Um, this is a, the table leg right here. And this is the, the little table that goes in the, uh, come on camera. There we go. It goes in that little uh, receiver right there. And it's kind of nice. You just set that down in there and you can sit on the couch and eat. Um, over here to the right, you've got 12 volt power right here. And in the back there, it's probably too dark to see, but in the back there's 110 volt power. So whether you're plugged in or whether you're running on battery, you got power for the TV. This TV is a 12 volt TV. I highly recommend it for anybody who wants to have one. Um, there originally wasn't any power in that cabinet, so I had these wires run. I had these, I should say, I did them. I didn't have it done, I did it myself. Ran these wires to this, I wired them into this light right here. It's uh, still dark. Let's try, try and get some more light in here. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I just wired them into this little light right here. Um, because 110 volt, or should I say 12 volt power doesn't require a lot of pull. Um, the 110 wire is right here. It runs over to this outlet right here, which is underneath here. So, uh, so you've got power. But it's nice because of the way that this bracket is designed, with, usually with two hands, you take the TV and you sort of tuck it into this corner and you sit down on the couch and you've got the perfect viewing angle. You just sit and relax and watch TV and you got all the windows and everything. So you've got a nice view. It's really quite nice. So the TV won't be in the RV. You have to put your own TV, but the bracket will be there to make it easy for you. Uh, I don't think there's anything else in this compartment I need to show you, just the table and everything. Uh, the table I had made smaller. It was about twice as big as this originally. And when you had it in place, you couldn't walk around. You couldn't get the fridge open. It was really just way too big. So I had it made smaller. Uh, moving into the kitchen area, I've already showed you this little cabinet up here. Um, I think it's important to point out that this is not cheap um, uh, particle board. This is solid wood. There's some kind of a veneer to make it look nicer, but it's not, it's not particle board. And it's held up really well over the years. Uh, a lot of these vans had white veneer on here and the white veneer almost always peeled off and looked terrible. I like the wood because it just, it, it's no maintenance and it still looks great. Uh, but down into the kitchen, uh, you got your paper towel holder, you got your sink, not a real big sink, but uh, good enough for what you need. Uh, two burner stove here, cooktop. Oh, come on. Sorry, this camera's giving me trouble. There we go. What is going on? There we go. Um, basically you just lift up this thing and then you got this little tab you pull out and it locks it just like that. And then when you're done, you drop it back down and you can put stuff on it. And you've also got this little flip up thing here to extend your countertop. So you really got a pretty good amount of counter space given, uh, the size of your living space. Uh, refrigerator, new refrigerator. 
less than two years old. That's a big one. These things are very expensive. Um, the original one just quit cooling, so I replaced it. This one's got the automatic controls. You just turn it on and it automatically detects whether you're plugged in or, or not. If you're not plugged in, it'll run on gas. If you are plugged in, it will switch over to electric. Uh, but it also has the AC-DC setting. So if you want to, you can turn on the DC and run off of battery instead of propane. Some people prefer that because they don't like having their anything running on propane while they're driving. Uh, they find it risky. Personally, I've always run it on gas when I, when I drive. Never had a problem. Um, however, if you want to run it on DC, you can. But I do not recommend leaving it on DC when you're not driving because it has a lot of draw. And if the alternator isn't constantly keeping your battery charged, it will drain your battery very quickly. Um, and then you just got your temperature settings here. It works really well. I've been in some really hot days, 90 plus, and everything inside is still nice and cold. Uh, plenty of space in here. It's got a little freezer, which works really well. You can keep ice cream in here. It'll stay nice and hard. Um, the door is sort of con convex shaped. I guess on the in series, convex. But right in the middle of this lower one is right is the perfect spot for half a gallon of milk. It fits right in here just fine. And then you can put soda cans on either side of it. Um, unfortunately, it's a little bit too small for a full gallon of milk, but you can definitely fit half gallons in here. It doesn't have the uh, decorative uh, panel that goes on top. You had to buy that separately, and I didn't want to pay for it. I was going to put something there myself, but never got around to it. So you can feel free to put whatever you want there. Um, you just uh, let's see. How. You take off this little top piece of plastic. It pops off somehow. I think you got to unscrew it, and uh, you slide the the panel down into the channels, and then replace this piece. It's real, really pretty easy. Uh, you got drawers, and they've got a little lip on them so you have to sort of lift and pull to get them open so that they don't uh, slide open when you're driving. Uh, lower cabinets, that's the original nasty blue carpeting if you can see it. Um, and you can see even under the cabinet it's stained but the whole thing had that carpeting and it really stunk. So I pulled it out and put it put this new stuff. For some reason these two cabinets are a little bit wonky. You gotta push them in. Um, and then obviously you got more here. Um, for, for as small a space as this is, it has a surprising amount of storage. Uh, up here, you've got an outlet, and you've got USB ports. One is 1 amp, one is 2.1 amp, which is perfect for charging cell phones. And uh, over here, you've got the same thing. you got the USB ports, that, and I, ha I, had these, I put these in myself. And this one also has a, a regular 12-volt socket, so if you can want to plug in a laptop or an inverter or something... You can do that there. Um, but you got another outlet over here. You got a little reading light here. And another one over here. I've upgraded these to LED. You got fluorescent light here. There's no cover on this one. There never was, unfortunately. Uh, this one here has a cover. Um, but I don't. I really rarely use these. I really only use this one when I'm cooking in the evening. Most of the time I use this rope light, which I installed. I really like this LED rope light goes all around the perimeter. It lights the whole thing very well, but what's nice about it is it runs over to this little switch here, which is a dimmer, and you just turn the crank and you set it to whatever brightness you want. It makes for some very nice mood lighting. It's not harsh on the eyes, and because it's LED, you can run it off battery for days and it won't drain your battery. Uh, another cabinet up here. Microwave works just fine. Not a very powerful one, so I usually tell people you need to microwave things about 30% longer in this microwave than you would in your uh, microwave at home because it's a pretty low wattage. But uh, it heats things up just fine. You just got to put them in there a little bit longer. Uh, you got these uh, blinds come down, give you privacy. That's nice. And this one has curtains. Uh, you got curtains around the front that swings, one swings this way. And then that one swings the other way. Um, unfortunately, the Velcro on these straps has gone bad, so I've been using these little clips, and they seem to work just fine. You know, you just got to adapt a little bit. These things, this thing is no spring chicken. Uh, it's pretty old, but it's still in great shape, I think, overall. Uh, over here, you got your water pump and your tank monitor. The tank monitor does not work. It has never worked, and I've never really cared.
Um, the black, the, the gray tank is the only one that has sensors anyway. So what's the point? Um, this is your thermostat. You set your temperature and then you just push this over to on and it keeps the van very warm. Uh, this is for the propane water heater. You just flip on this switch, it ignites and heats up the water. Uh, this is, it's called a solar charging system. There is no solar charging system though. It has a tiny little solar panel on the roof that stopped working years ago. And quite frankly, it's so small, even if it did work, it wouldn't provide enough power to do anything. But this thing is useful for monitoring your battery. So it tells you what your voltage is. When it drops down to the lowest, lowest point, you want to charge your battery. Uh, when you're driving, it should be 13.5 or 14. If it's not, you know you've got a problem. Uh, generator controls. You can start and stop your generator. As you see, 297 hours, which is not much. Uh, these generators can go 2,000 hours easily if you take care of them. And I change the oil regularly. I use a, a high-grade synthetic oil to maintain it because uh, they're very expensive to, to replace or, or repair. So high maintenance, but uh, very nice to have. I always start the generator at least once a month and run it for 10, 15 minutes. Uh, even in the winter time, just to keep nice fresh gas in the carburetor, keep it from getting gummed up. Uh, this cord running down here runs down under the couch, and you got another little compartment down here. You can put some things, but um, it plugs into this right here. This is that electric kit that I showed you on the water heater, and this is the switch for it. You just flip this on, and you you got hot water running off electricity instead of propane. It's really really nice. I love that kit. I recommend it highly. Let's see. Let's start to move to the back here. Uh, let's see. More compartments. Uh, whoops. Uh-oh. Hope that didn't just screw up my audio. Um, and then you got a nice big wardrobe here. And uh, this is really nice for, for clothes. Uh, you got a couple of little hanger things up here. You put put hangers up here. It's nice that there's two of them in case you got two people. You kind of got a his and hers thing going on here. So that's nice. Plenty of room there. And then you got another compartment down here with your uh, breaker box in there. So that's your 110 volt breaker and uh, some drain valves that I've never bothered to use because I just use compressed air to blow the lines out when I winterize. Uh, we'll skip the bathroom for now. We'll move to the back. I'll come back to the bathroom in a minute. This is not the original mattress, obviously. The original mattress was uh, pretty smelly and awful. So I removed it and I put this together. You got carpet padding, a one layer of foam, and then another layer of latex foam. This latex foam is hard to even describe. You'd have to feel it for yourself. It's, it, it literally feels like a combination of latex and foam. Uh, but it's really, really soft and, and sort of springy. And then I put this mattress pad on top of it and we trimmed trimmed it to fit and sewed it back up. So it's uh, custom made for this van. This is not a standard size mattress, but when you're going to buy sheets for it, I recommend a full, so the, the full size uh, sheets. And uh, they'll be a little bit too big, but you just tuck the excess under and you're good to go. Um, I'm five foot seven and I can lie with my head there, my feet just barely touch over here. So if you're taller than 5'7", you'll have to sleep on an angle. And if you're much taller than that, I don't recommend this van for you because you're not going to be very comfortable. This is not for big people. I mean, just right here, you can see how I'm wedged into this thing. You got to kind of go sideways through here. And if you're a big person, much bigger than I am, you're going to have some trouble. So just be aware of that. Um, up here, you got another cabinet here. And another cabinet here and as you can see there was some water damage in the past the veneer has been damaged here and there's some staining on this thing here it's that little saddle where the air conditioner sits that was leaking um, oh this thing broke off I gotta fix this sorry I'll fix this before I sell it this thing just popped off um, but when I replaced the air conditioner I sealed all that stuff up and no more leaks and I was also getting a leak from the uh, rear window. It's an emergency hatch. It swings open and the rubber seal around it had gone bad. So I replaced the rubber seal. No more leaks. So anyway, 
Uh, there's also a little TV back here. I put this in because when you're lying on the bed, you can't see the TV in the front. Um, I had a little Roku that I used here, but uh, I don't think this... No. I thought this had a DVD player, but I don't think it does. Um, you could easily put a DVD player up here and, and run it in. There's a 110 volt power here, and there's 12 volt power here with USBs. I think these USBs might not work. I think they got shorted out by mistake. I was going to replace this unit and didn't have a chance. However, if the seller, if the buyer would like me to, I can replace this before you take uh, possession of the vehicle. But uh, the hundred, the, the twelve volt thing works. So uh, you got a little TV back here, and it's kind of nice to have in the evening to lie in bed and relax and watch TV. All right, so let's move to the bathroom because this is important here. All right, we'll flip this on here. All right, it is a wet bath. Fully enclosed. You got a shower head, which is nice. I upgraded this shower head from the original. And you got a little sink. Uh, you got a little waterproof cabinet here where you can keep toilet paper. So that's kind of nice. Um, you got a little heat vent here. If you got your furnace on, it keeps the bathroom warm. Um, but it's all nice and, and intact. It's not cracked. It's in good shape. But the most important thing is this. This toilet. Originally, the, the van had a recirculating toilet which basically was a self-contained unit. It had no black tank. It was all built in. You'd put a couple gallons of fresh water into the thing, and then when you used it, you pressed a button, and it sucked the water out of the holding tank and cycled it back through the toilet and back down into the tank again. So start to think about that. After a few uses, what is that water made of that's running back into the toilet? It was so disgusting, I couldn't even stand to look at it. I hated it, but there was no black tank, so I couldn't just simply pull it out and put in a flush toilet, but I found this. This is a Sealand 7-Eleven M28 made by Dometic, originally designed for boats. It has this little thing back here that I have capped off where you would run a pipe up from wherever the toilet was up to the deck of the boat and you'd use vacuum to suck this tank out. This is the black tank right here. But obviously I don't want to do that. I wanted to use gravity dump like every other RV. So I had a, I cut a hole in the bottom and I had a piece of plastic ABS welded to the bottom of the pipe and I ran new pipe, new plumbing from that pipe down to the dump valves. And then I ran a fresh water line through the wall to the toilet. So this now is a fully flushable uh, fresh water flush uh, toilet and with the pipes running down to the valves up to this tank you have about 11 gallons of holding tank worth here uh, for me I can go about six to seven days if I use this toilet for every need if you want to stretch that you can use public toilets and that sort of thing and make it last a little bit longer but if not you got a pretty good amount of holding tank here uh, this was the biggest, most complicated, difficult thing I did. Uh, and it was worth every penny, every bit of effort. It was such a huge difference having a real flush toilet in here rather than the old recirculating one. Um, unfortunately, the tank was a little bit too big to fit with the old threshold. The old threshold came in about this far. So I had to pull out the old one and we redesigned it, replaced it with this nice piece of copper. Um, and we installed these little drip edges on the door so that the water stays in the pan when you're showering. Everything just runs right down the door and in. And the toilet is sealed on the bottom. I put a bead of caulk around the tank so water won't get under the tank. It's uh, really, really good, I think. Everything works beautifully. Um, you got a little soap dispenser there. One for soap, one for shampoo. And you got a little medicine cabinet here. So yeah, there you go. This little thing just sort of, it's on a little wheel. You just gotta kinda pop that in, and then this door closes. See? And you got a nice seal on the bottom. So that's it, folks. That is the African Queen. She is for sale. Oh, let me check the mileage. Yeah, 80,887 miles. I'm hoping you can see that right there. So the engine had 56,000 miles when I installed it. It was a brand new crate engine. It was not a rebuilt. Uh, 
so yeah you got a lot of my lot of life left in this motor and uh, it's not going to give you any major problems so the african queen is for sale um, i will put a list of everything i did that i can think of in the description of this video however i also documented everything from the day she arrived to today i've documented all the repairs and upgrades that i've done so go back into my videos and watch everything i've done and uh I think you'll see you're getting a really, really good, reliable van that you can drive anywhere. You jump in and go anywhere you want, and she will get you there and back. You will not have any problems. So uh, the pr asking price is 15000 Might seem like a lot to some people, but those who are familiar with the, what these vans actually go for will know it's not unreasonable. Um, however, I will listen to offers. So if you want to uh, make an offer... You can get in touch with me, uh, ramblinmichigander at gmail.com. Uh, I have uh, an iPhone, so I'll be willing to uh, do a video tour with somebody through uh, FaceTime, or we can also use Skype if you want, if you want a, a personal tour, uh, something a more close look, or if you wanted to come and take a look personally. Uh, shoot me an email, and uh, that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. If I think of anything else, I'll throw them into the description. All right, everybody. Take care. Thanks for looking.